Hey everyone at the landing, dear faith family, another fresh word for the middle of the week. So glad for the help that these little videos have been to you. I uh, hope that you can tune into them and find some spiritual encouragement. They are an encouragement for Pastor Andrew and myself to put out. I was encouraged by Pastor Andrew's word last week from James. And uh, I hope what I have to say about this testimony in my life will be of encouragement to you. An odd thing has happened to me in this self-isolation. I would say, it's my testimony, that the Spirit of Christ has been more active, more clear, more discernible and louder in my heart than ever before. And that's surprising to me. I would not have expected that. I would have said prior to the onset of the coronavirus that my spiritual life was good. And I was hearing from the Lord. I was having good times in his word every day and reflecting on his word for study or for preaching or for teaching or for counseling. And that I was uh, in, in prayer regularly and enjoying times in prayer, that I was in times of thanksgiving as I'm driving down the road or as I'm getting up in the morning or as I'm uh, talking with my wife Kathy or my daughter Ruthie or interacting with my son Ben and his wife Maddie or others, I would have said, thank you, Lord, for my walk with you. But more than even prior to the coronavirus, now my spiritual life has grown nearer to the Lord. And I'm surprised by that. I did not expect it. I didn't ask for it. I didn't uh, even think it was going to happen. But it has. Here's what I mean. Let me give you the, the specifics of what I'm talking about and the Bible passages from which these uh, realities arise. Just five things. I could say so much more. I'll quickly give you five. First, I have been more aware than ever that the Holy Spirit is the one who awakened me from the dead. I don't, I wouldn't have believed in him and I don't believe in him unless he first initiated his work in my dead life. It's Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses. Do you hear that? He loved me so greatly so massively, so powerfully when I was dead in my trespasses. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So that making alive, that quickening, that awakening, he has done, he's done that for all of us. Every believer is dead and then he initiates and comes into their lives, makes them alive so that they can believe. That's how they become a believer. That's how they are then converted. That's how justification and all the wonderful blessings of the new life in Christ happen, is that God reaches into a dead corpse and makes it alive. I'm more keenly aware of that than I've ever been in my life. And I have believed that for decades because the Bible teaches it so plainly. Yet it's a sweeter reality to me now than ever. I don't know why except the grace and mercy of Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. Second, I'm told in the Bible, Romans 5, 5, to ask that the Holy Spirit would pour God's love into my life. Romans 5, 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That passage out of Romans 5, 5 teaches me and enables me and empowers me to ask for God's love to be poured into my life. If I don't ask for God's love to be poured into my life, I don't have God's love for other people. I don't have God's love for him. I don't have God's love for the lost. I don't have God's love for the church or for people who are difficult to get along with. I need his love to be poured into my life. And I have experienced the reminder to ask for his love to be poured into my life more than ever, and he has poured his love into my life more than ever. Evicting bitterness and pettiness, evicting ingratitude and keeping records of wrongs against what people have done against me, or I perceive people have done against me. Evicting grumbling and complaining and judgmentalism and separating myself from people that rub me the wrong way. All that's been pushed out of my life more so than ever because I have asked by his prompting for his Holy Spirit to pour his love into my heart. And he has. 
I find myself genuinely loving people more than I could love them in my own natural ability. And I'm amazed at that. I'm thrilled at that. I commend that to you with all my heart. A third thing, he cultivates his fruits and his gifts in me. The Bible teaches that until Christ returns, he's pouring his love into us, and not just his love, but all his fruits, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He's pouring that into us. That's who he is when his spirit is alive and, and working in us ungrieved and unhindered. Those qualities, those glorious realities are all bursting forth in us like flower buds in the springtime. And his gifts. Every one of us have been given spiritual gifts for the common good, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says. And those gifts can be added to more than one gift, or they can be different at different times, or gifts can come for a momentary ministry need. And every one of those fruits and every one of those gifts has the aim of glorifying God in Christ in every situation of our lives. Fruits and gifts are not for our private, proud, selfish uh, enjoyment or pleasure. They are for a greater enjoyment and pleasure of glorifying Christ in the lives of others. That's what all fruits and gifts of the Spirit are for. Fourth, he speaks silently but clearly to me in my spirit, guiding me according to his word. Remember when Paul said to the Ephesian elders on the shore of the Mediterranean when he was going to leave them for the last time, he said, And now behold, I'm going to Jerusalem constrained by the Holy Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me every in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. You see what the Spirit is doing? He's constraining Paul and testifying to Paul in his inner spirit about the realities he's going to experience. And those realities are not other than what the Scripture has already said. It's not new. It's not novel. It's not different. It's not a variation or an addition to Scripture. It's confirming and applying Scripture to Paul in his very life. The very trips he's taking, the very days that he faces in his calendar, the very next moment in his life, the Holy Spirit is constraining Paul and testifying to Paul exactly what he'll expect and, and, and experience. That's happening in my life too. I can see what the Holy Spirit's doing. I can see the scriptures the Holy Spirit is pointing to. I can see the events and movements of him in my life more clearly than ever. Not nearly as clearly as I would like or as I see in the scriptures, but on my testimony is, thank God for this coronavirus self-isolation time because God is doing something in my life by it. Fifth and finally, I can tell that what the Holy Spirit is doing in all of these things and many more is bringing glory to Christ. He never works apart from Christ. Beware of any teacher or any idea or any false teaching out there that lurks. It's all over the area. I hear it on radio. I see it in books. I hear it in people's prayers. I hear it in people's conversations. They tell it to me all the time. False teaching on the Holy Spirit is everywhere. You can tell false teaching right away because it always includes a connection between the Spirit and the person that doesn't lead to Christ. It's called mysticism or Gnosticism. You don't need to know those words with regard to the error, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They define American churches and American Christianity and the error that causes so many churches to die and the, and the Holy Spirit to withdraw and be grieved by them. I see it all over the Northland. And I have had to repent of some of the thinking, that same thinking in my own life. Maybe you have too. The Spirit is always glorifying Christ. If there's ever a, holy, a Spirit at work, in a group or in your life or in a person that doesn't glorify Christ, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's another spirit. And there are many other ones lurking around, as Jesus said. These are just five things the Holy Spirit's doing in my life to glorify Christ and bring glory to the Father. Trinitarian work in my life. And I feel very humbled. I feel very thankful. I feel very blessed. And I commend them to you. I commend these passages to you and a deeper, further reflection 
uh, of your life, asking for everything the Bible teaches about the Holy Spirit to be a reality for you. I hope you're doing well. I want to pray for you right now. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us at the landing to glorify Christ, upon all who are observing this video, but more importantly, opening spiritual eyes and observing Holy Scripture and seeing the very truths and promises of who you are, how you work, and what you are doing in the world and in the lives of your people. Bless your church with your spirit. Purge wrong ideas, false doctrine, and sin and unbelief out of our lives and out of our gatherings and out of our unity. Bless us with your spirit even more powerfully than you already have. Keep doing it, Lord. Keep doing it in Jesus' name and for his glory and honor. Abounding to the Father, I pray these things. Amen. God bless you. I hope you're doing well. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Keep in touch with each other and with us. We're glad to keep praying for you. God bless you.